Once I said it a thousand times, you get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one. If they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. before him there will never be anybody coming after him there will never be anyone coming behind him there will there's never no one that will ever be greater than him here O Israel Yahweh Elohim is one and Israel you ought to love him with all your heart all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. There is only one. One master, one faith, one baptism. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. One. I and my Father are one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the only glory of the Father full of grace and full of truth. I and my Father are uh, one. Y'all hear that, Israel? That's it. Yahshua, I'm a chick. The magnificent, the benevolent, the great I am, the wonderful, the almighty, the everlasting father, the Prince of Peace. There's none like him. And never ever will be. In English tongue his name is Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. This is real. This is real. 
Who are you, Jesus? Before Abraham was, I am. Y'all hear me, Israel? For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Yah, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Y'all hear that? That's it. That is it, the Emmanuel. That is the reason why we're here today. That's the reason why we exist. Because he is the creator of all things. Both seen and unseen. Heaven and earth. And he created all things for his good pleasure. Man, I tell you. It sure is nice to have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. It really truly is. It really is. Ain't y'all good. Ain't y'all good. It is a good thing to give thanks unto Yahweh. And to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy love and kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon the psaltery, upon the sound, upon the ten strings. For thou, Yah, has made me glad. Y'all hearing that? Man, it is, it is the essence. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. There ain't none like him, brothers and sisters. You might as well get it through your thick heads. I'm telling you right now, he is real. You know how you know he's real? Because you got his Holy Spirit. You've got the Ruach. You've been born again. That's how you know he's real. Hallelujah. Man, I, I can't even begin. Uh, to give him enough praise, enough glory, because we would all run out of breath. Every one of us would. All right, what are we at here tonight? Um, therefore, Yahweh himself shall give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. And it shall call his name Emmanuel. David said, unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the so be it. He's the sole purpose and reason why we even exist, brothers and sisters. All praises and all glory to his magnificent and wonderful name. There's none like him. There's none like him in all of the earth. Hallelujah. That's just the truth. And we give him praise. You know the reason why we give him praise? Because we're in the last month of the Roman calendar before we head to the first month of the Hebrew calendar to where we give him glory for always being mindful of us and being our Passover. Atoning for our sins and reconciling his people back to him again. We thank the Father for it. Hallelujah. What a glorious time it's going to be when we all in Shemayim singing and shouting with the angel band. Hallelujah. What a time. What a glorious day that's going to be. 
I can't help it, brothers and sisters, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm excited about Jesus. I don't know if you're excited about Yahshua, but I'm still, after all these years, I'm still excited about serving him. Still excited about it. Can't help but to be excited about it. Blessed be the name of Yah. Glory to the King. Still excited. Still on fire. Still running for my life. Hallelujah. How does this song go? One thing that I desire of Yahweh, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yah all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Yah, to inquire in his temple, I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of Yah. Israel, wait on Yah. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say wait on Yah. Hallelujah. You in the land of the living. Wait on Yah. Hallelujah. You can't get no more better encouragement than blessing than that. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. And no man taketh this honor unto himself except he that was called of Yah as was Aaron. Hallelujah. We're going to get started here tonight because I'll keep on going. I'll keep on going all night long. I will just literally keep on going. It's it, it just so good. Great is Yahweh and greatly to be praised in the city of our Yah and in the mountain of his holiness. Hallelujah. Man, I, I'm telling you, we can go on. We can go on. We can go on. Man, is that wording y'all like that to where you can take an hour drive and just encourage yourself like David did at Ziklag? Because this word is perishing in a lot of people. If you don't have that kind of encouragement inside your heart, this word is going to perish inside. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it will perish. You got to have him in your heart. You really, truly got to have him in your heart. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. This is Pastor Dow. Welcome to the Straight Way Truth Radio broadcast here tonight on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Pastor Dow. The guest calling number is 515 602 9654. I'm glad to know that you've made it another week and you're still in the faith. Hallelujah. We got Pesca, Passover coming up. Brother Freddie. And his family has already done booked their plane tickets. They're on their way. We pray that y'all will give them a safe trip and a safe journey. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. We um, are encouraged here tonight in straight way. We're tired. Ain't no doubt about it. I looked at Brother Scott. Brother Scott was playing a good time over there. At, at practice this evening, I looked at him and said, Brother, you tired, ain't you? He, man, he's wore out. He's just literally wore out. Thank y'all for the Shabbat. Brother Scott and his family, Sister Angelica and the children, they will be in straightway Georgia, visiting with the saints of the Most High Yah next week. They're in straightway Georgia. And so, um, if y'all want to meet Brother Scott, Sister Angelica, and the children, you're in that area, come on down and make it a, a big old hoodangy, humdinger, whatever you call it in the country, shindig. Have a good old time of fellowship there with the saints from the Most High Yacht from Straightway. They're going to, I'm sure that Elder Rufus them is always going to roll out the red carpet for the saints because they always do. Hallelujah. Brother Scott, Sister Angelica, and the children, Judith, 
uh, little Gideon and little Charles, they'll be there. Live. Glory to the king. Sure, they're going to have a wonderful time. We um, are excited about the Passover coming up. We really, really, truly are. We are excited about the Passover. Hey, Sister Vicky, I cannot find my Joanne. So can you give me your copy of Joanne so I can make a copy of it tomorrow morning and then I'll get it back to you and give it to you at service? That's one thing I've been getting good at and is giving people back this stuff. No, most people, Joanne, who is Joanne? I heard the voice of Jesus say, come on to me and rest. Don't worry about it. Lay down your weary head. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll play it one day. <clears throat> That's good music. Good music. Somebody said, what are you singing, Pastor? First of all, I ain't singing nothing. I just make a joyful noise. Uh, the singer's all up there. Guest calling number 515-602-9654. I'm sure y'all been watching the videos I've been putting out all week long. I've been extremely busy on that. Um, oh, yeah. Brother Scott, don't let me forget that um, y'all need to take a cooler down there. And take between 80 and 100 pounds of chicken breast down there and drop it off um, to the saints down there uh, in um, Georgia. Uh, just don't let me forget it. All right? Make a, make a note of that. Glory to the King. We're looking forward to seeing y'all, each and every one of you. We want y'all to have safe travels and safe journey while y'all on the road. Um. We really truly do. Uh, you know, it's such a wonderful, wonderful thing to be in the faith in the hour that we're living in. We're going to go ahead and take your phone calls in tonight, but you know, sometimes Pastor Dow gets a little bit beside himself, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, a lot of times that's what I do when it's just me by myself and I'm out on that road. A lot of times I just cut that radio off and I just sing songs, sing hymns, Talk to Yah, quote scripture, let the Holy Spirit minister unto me. I will hide thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? I want everybody, I said everybody, I, I want y'all to remember. This verse I'm getting ready to give you. I want y'all to remember it. Highlight it in your Bible. Bind it on the tables of your heart and don't forget it. I'm going to give y'all a scripture verse. All right, y'all ready? Are you ready? I'm going to give you time to get a pencil sheet of paper. Y'all write this scripture verse down. Y'all ready? Proverbs chapter 15, verse 28. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 28. The righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Y'all locked it in, Israel. Locked it in. Glory to the king. We're going to go ahead with our father. Do go ahead and do the guest calling them. Look here. You got a question? I love you all. I know y'all concerned about Pastor Dow. I'm doing fine. I'm alive. I'm well. Uh, we, we doing all right. All right, I know y'all concerned. Glory to the King. <laughs> Hallelujah. All that I say, hey, look at it. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's get right on to the questions. I love you all. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Man, we got Brother Claudio. Claudio from Minnesota. Look at him. 
Guest call in number 612 612. Brother Claudio from Minnesota. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Strip Me Tube radio broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Claudio? Bro, Claudio, you there, man? Uh oh. I'm not hearing nothing. Claudio going once. Claudio going twice. Claudio going three times. We'll come back to you if you're in there. Let's go to Utah, brother Jason. Call number three eight five three eight five. It's Pastor Dow. You're on the Strip Radio broadcast. I can have it, brother Jason. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom, brother Jason. How are you? I'm doing all right. I just thought I would uh, call in. I've got something that I need to say. and I don't have a lot of people around me to say it to, but I thought I'd let you know, and anyone else who might be listening, that I'm, I have uh, come out of her, as you would say. I You... Uh, I've, I've called in a few times. You know I'm part of, or have been part of, the LDS Church for a while. Wow. And I'm sorry to say, but due to due to your, uh, well, I'm not sorry to say, but <laughs> the people who I talk to, I guess I can still use it. But due to the thinking that I've been prompted to do by listening to you for the past six months or so, I'm sorry to say I'm not going to believe in uh, God that capitulates to the government. There's no way. I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but the, the the LDS Church only ever cared about anything changing when the government made them do it. Now there's words of them uh, accepting gay marriage into the church. Which are you? Oh, oh, uh, oh, 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 I hope bro, that's. Jason. I hope that's just a rumor. Are you serious? Hey, it ain't nothing. No difference than the Christians are doing. The Christians are doing the same damn thing, man. They accepting all that perversion into that church. I thank y'all that he's giving you the ears to hear, and he got you out of that mess. Oh, oh, I'm not going to no Catholic church either. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Bro, Jason, can I ask don't, you a question? Don't, don't, no, don't uh, misunderstand me for a second. I'm not, I'm not uh, going to go over there because they do the same thing. And my, like, my family is completely a part of this LDS church, and they all believe in christmas and other stuff and i try to explain it to them but they don't care really they just push it away like oh it's not a big deal I'm like well it's not a big deal to understand it no it's not the big deal is the fact that you continue to celebrate it and don't care about what it is about that's right that's right you know that's the problem <laughs> right. that's that's just an example there's many other things they also uh you may or you probably already know this. You're pretty knowledgeable, but they teach uh, quite a few things that are definitely against the Bible, or at least what I know about the Bible, because I was more taught the uh, Book of Mormon than I was the Bible. Even though they're supposed supposed to be the same scripture and supposed to work together in sync, however, that is not the truth. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still listening. I'm listening. Oh, I just started hearing other things. I was like, what's that? <laughs> um, but yeah, they, uh, for example, you, you, I'm sure you're aware that they believe that you can become God, right? Oh, yeah. I, I know about that doctrine. Yes, sir. Yes, that's part of, that's the, that's the mainstream doctrine, and it's the, it's the purpose of all of the acts that are done inside the temple. Jesus. All of them are done for that purpose. Also, I'm assuming you also know about how uh, most of their stuff that they use in the temple is also part of uh, what Masons use. Yeah. You know, like the Freemasons. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good portion of what they do is that as well, which I'm fully aware of the Freemasons and how they, uh, well, let's just put it that they're a devil worshippers and leave it at that. How long you been listening to me? Um, about six months. I started listening to you on YouTube when I it was a suggested video about 
a suggested video when I was watching a MGTOW video. And it was a video where you talked about your uh, how the women act there and how respectful they are. Right. And I watched it, and then I made a comment underneath about how 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 amazing I thought that'd be. I would, I would lose my mind if I even met a woman like that, let alone, you know, had a woman like that. And you may, you responded to that with another video only hours later. Like, you responded directly to my comment. You, you stated it exactly in the next video and then went further into it. Well, it's all true. I mean, a lot of people are going to be here for Passover. We even got people in your neck of the woods that's up there in Utah that's going to be here for Passover. Um, they, they, um, they, you, you, you know, you're going to meet Israelites. If you ever get a chance to come, man, you need to try to set your affairs in order, try to get to a feast day one day. I don't know when they are, but I actually, I've been thinking about it for a while because I hear you talk about them. I don't know much about them. But they sound very interesting, just like uh, I responded to one of your uh, uh, one of your announcements about what you're doing down there in the with the gun training and stuff like, and the uh, self defense training and yes, warning people don't sign up if you're not gonna if you're gonna be worried about getting hurt don't do it. Yeah, like, I'd love to, but if I remember a previous video said that you're only training Israelites, which I currently am not an Israelite. I'm pretty sure so. I would not be eligible for that list. Well, it, how you become an Israelite is you just accept the real true Jesus Christ. You get filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you walk in the newness of life. That is what an Israelite. We're not talking about this natural born stuff. We're talking about that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. That's what we're talking about. Oh, I've, I've been listening, Pastor Dow. You've made it quite clear that you are not describing the natural born Israelite which a lot of people try to use and then uh, pervert into a into a racist type view and you make sure and clear any kind of accusation like that away all the time I've yes. noticed yes sir you, you are very clear about that and I'm, I'm actually another reason why I keep listening to you I don't know if you you could probably guess but I'm not I'm not the natural born Israelite either I got you <laughs> That's all right. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, I say that's actually really close to what they do in the LDS church. They do, they do baptize you, uh, both by water and by fire and give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. They give you. And that's all part of, uh, it has to be passed down by someone who current, who already has it. Nah, it's they... like, uh, priesthood. And everything else has to be passed down from someone who has that priesthood or higher. No, it don't work like that in the Bible. Well, as I said, I'm not particularly studied on the Bible. That's why, like, what I know is from things I've read uh, as extension study. Like, when you're, when you're in church and they give you little references, I've looked through that. I've read through the Bible once, but I haven't memorized it too well. And then... I know anything that is consistently brought up about the Bible in conversation. So. Well, Jason, I want you to, you get an opportunity, go to my um, page or the Brother Daryl or the Straightway University or Straightway Tech Team. Go there and type in uh, Holy Spirit, Pastor Dow, Holy Spirit, and listen to one of those teachings and you'll see what I'm talking about. But you're going to have to have your Bible with you. I have a Bible. I don't have a particularly old Bible. I have the one that is the combination, which is the Bible being uh, retranslated or re, uh, what do you term to use? Triliated or something like that? Yeah, translation, yeah. <laughs> um, translation, that's the word, that's the one you use. I have that, but it's, you know, like a combination that has the Holy Bible, the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price, which is all. Everything other than the Bible is yeah. actually LDS exclusive material. Well, just go out and get an old King James, man. That'll do. I mean, it, it, it's 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 a decent translation, but it's a good place to start. I use it almost every Sabbath when I'm teaching, because I know this type of Bible that everybody right. has. It 
it works out, I think I'll get myself a hold of one of those. All right, my brother. Bro, also, Jason. Fun, fun little side fact, I became your uh, 315th Patreon, by the way. Really? About an hour ago. Well, hallelujah. Glad you're yes. bored, my brother. Make sure you go back into the archives and every video that you can actually listen to. You get an opportunity, go check it out, okay? That's a, that's a will do. Then uh, I was going to ask you, just because I, like I said, I don't know the Bible too well. I'm participating in a week-long fast to get rid of all this shenanigans that I've been eating from this lovely poison food that I've been eating. And I was curious, in addition to that, is there any spiritual relevance to fasting? There was in the LDS Church, but I'm curious if, according to the Bible, if there's any spiritual reference to fasting and how to do so. First thing I would do, Brother Jason, is, is um, I would actually get on my knees and I would cry out to the Most High. And I would, I would repent of every single iniquity transgression, uh, including being in the LDS church, even though you didn't know that you was being deceived. I'd repent of that, man. I would cry out, man, till tears are streaming down my face in godly sorrow. And I would ask Jesus to lead me and guide me um, and, and tell him you're more than happy to be his disciple. And... Um, and, and then ask him to fill you with the real genuine Holy Spirit. Brad, you, you about to have an experience of your life that only Yahshua can give you himself. The Ruach. There you, there you go, the Ruach. Sound like you've been listening. I, I have been listening. I uh, have the privilege of listening to content all day. So the moment you put out a vehicle, uh, a video, a vehicle. Wow. The moment you put out a video, I'm able to listen to it. Brother, Jason has been an honor. I don't want to listen to it, of course, but... That's good, because in a multitude of counselors, you, only, you should only have one counsel among a thousand. That is very good. You're biblical already. Well, thank you very much, and I'm going to make sure and do my... Uh, the term you use, my due diligence. Due diligence. There and you not go. participate in blind faith. Hallelujah. Which has already got me in trouble once. Yeah, we are. Uh, I'm sure you notice about straightway that we almost demand for people to be students and know what the Bible says rather than just taking people face value. You, you got to be like the Bereans. You got to be more noble than they and that's the like because you search out the scriptures to see if those things that were so. Make sure all, all those things, no one's just making stuff up and trying to control and manipulate you. That's right. Bro, Jason. Right, well, thank you very much, Pastor Dow. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Shabbat Shalom, and I'll, I'll uh, leave you to be able to talk to some more of the brothers. Shabbat Shalom, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Be encouraged. King coming. Keep listening. That's Brother Jason out there in Utah. Is that not a wonderful phone call here tonight? Most people don't understand what it means to be steeped into Mormonism. He's right. He let the cat out of the bag. Got a lot of stuff about them, man. They ain't nothing but just Freemasons. That's all they are. Satanists. <clears throat> Let's go back over here. Bruce Scott sent me a message that the old blog talk number's working. That's 310-982-4226. That's 310-982-4226. I let that phone call go on a little while because that's the first time caller. Uh, it's a very good, hey, it looked like the Most High Yah is dealing with him and bringing him out, and that's a beautiful thing. Glory to the King. All right, but let's go ahead and get right on to the questions. Let's go ahead, uh, Brother Claudio. Minnesota, 612, 612, Pastor Dowley on the Shrimp and Radio Broadcast. I can help you, bro. Claudio. Shalom, shalom, my shepherd. How are you, sir? All right, my brother. How are you and the family doing? We are blessed. We have been just, we just been blessed, brother. Our pastor, we just been blessed. I'm actually um, right here with um, Brother Bud. Glory. We are fellow 
Yes, we are fellowshipping with Brother Bud, and um, it's just beautiful. I got to I'm I'm, I'm I got to meet their whole family, and I'm just I'm just full of joy. Hallelujah, man! That's a wonderful thing, man. Wonderful thing, my brother. Yes, sir. You know, I just uh, you know, I I do go out there with with to Wisconsin here and there, but you know, I cannot forsake the brothers over here as well. Sure, you can. So we are. You know, so it's just beautiful, and I'm I'm a, I'm I'm just having a good time, and uh, I love you, Pastor. You you've been a good pastor till we've been praying really hard for you. Uh, spiritual warfare. I know there's a lot of things going on out there. People are speaking against you, and we've been uh, me and my wife reversing these curses back to the sender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yes, sir. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you here. Our brother, brother Bud is here next to me, so I'm gonna give the phone to him right now. Sorry. All right. <laughs> oh, Pastor, how you doing, sir? Oh, that's first time caller, long time listener. How you doing, my brother? <laughs> I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, my brother. Uh, well, um, so uh, what? I just my my wives are here, um, and I was wondering I was wondering if they might ask you a question that you might be able to uh, um, expound on, and then we'll listen on the air if that's okay. Sure, go so, ahead. Shoot, right. boom, communicate. So, so uh, BJ, do you have a question? Amy, yes. What was the question? Oh, um, my daughter would like to know when. Um, she has to wear a head covering, and my wife, BJ, what did you want to know? Uh, my wife, Amy, wanted to know about, what did you want to know? Uh, she wanted to know a little bit more about head coverings, when she has to wear it, when she doesn't, and my other wife wanted to know, she got nothing today, so she's good. She, she, <laughs> she agrees with me completely 100%. All right. <laughs> Okay. All right, we'll listen on air. All right, bless you, my brother. Love you. Bless you too, Pastor. Love you, bye. Love you too, Sloan Song. All right, when do you wear a head covering? Well, the Bible teaches that a woman should wear a head covering when she's praying or prophesying. And that is when the, that's the primary reason why she's aware. it. However, as an Israelite, it is a cultural thing that has just been passed down through the ages of our people that our women always wore head covers. Why? Because one thing, the Bible says that we should be praying always without ceasing. I don't know about out there, but I do know that every time you walk around this land, you will see a sister walking down the road by herself and, uh, by herself and you will see her mouth moving. And most people in the world will think, what's wrong with that woman? But kind of like Hannah and them, she's praying, she's talking to y'all. So rather than our women taking the head covering off and putting it back on, taking it off and putting it back on, they do that. They just wear it all the time. Also, if you are married, you should cover your head. All you have to do is go and look and see what Rebecca did. And I've got a newsletter, a partial newsletter on the website. Most of you are very fortunate because I am working on an extensive newsletter right now concerning the head covering. Right now, this is all that you should be concerned with, but more than anything, obedience to Yah. In Israel, one thing that the head covering does, as far as a woman shows, is shows that you are under authority, and you are reverencing, and you are respecting the head that Yah has put over you. Hope that was sufficient enough for right now, but a newsletter is coming out. Glory to the King. Yah is good. Let's go to uh, Georgia, Brother Mitch. It's Pastor Dow, 706. You're on the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. I can help you, Brother Mitch. Brother Mitch going once. Brother Mitch going twice. Brother Mitch going three times. Let's go to Florida. Brother Ray, 904-904. It's Pastor Dow. You're on the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. I can help you, Brother Ray. Shabbat Shalom, my shepherd. Bless you. Bless you, brother Ray. Shabbat Shalom. How you doing? I have a question, Pastor, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, If 
if a brother or a sister has it on their heart to help another brother or sister out, um, can they just do that, or do we have to go through, like, you or elder or somebody? No, brother, you don't have to go through me or go through no elders in order to help a brother or sister out, brother. You don't have to do that, brother. Um, your righteousness is of the most high. And, and brother, let the Ruach lead you and guide you. Um, that, that's how you do that. You see a brother or sister out you that in need, man, help them out, man, if, if it's in your power and your ability to be able to do it. Yes, sir. I, I just, you know, need some clarification because I was just wondering. That's all. You yes, know, I wanted to make sure. Well, hallelujah. Very good question. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. I'll see you at Passover. Bless you, my brother. Y'all be encouraged. Shalom, shalom. Yes, sir. Let's go to our brother Gary. 318-318 in Louisiana. This is Pastor Dow. You know, serve you the radio broadcast. I can help you, Brother Gary. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Hey, bless you, Brother Gary. Shabbat Shalom. Good to hear your voice, man. Yes, sir. We are, we'll be in Glasgow, Kentucky, on Tuesday. That's where we're moving to. Glasgow, man. Y'all really close. Yes, sir. And that's the, um, a question I have to ask you. Um, now, when we get there... How do we go about, like, knowing we can come to the Shabbat services in person? Well, all you got to do is jump in your vehicle and drive the straightway, and that's how you know you can come to Shabbat services. Okay, but uh, I was just thinking we had to call or, you know, something, you know. Brother Gary. Because we was going to be so close, and that was going to be our pay. Brother Gary, how long have I been knowing you, brother? Uh, it's, it's, it's been over a year now, so, yeah, bro, bro, I just was just making sure and not overstepping the bounds. Bro, Gary, how, how many times you been straight way? Uh, we've been uh, one, two, like two feet. It's been a year. Uh, bro, Gary, jump in your vehicle and, and you and your family come on down for Shabbat service. Yes, sir. That's all we needed to hear. And, and if yeah, my wife laughing now. I'm gonna help you out here real quick. And if you call in through the week early enough, and if you're in Glasgow, but if you like to come in like on a Friday night or a Saturday morning, and you'll like to stay over the night and then drive back the next day. All you have to do is call the dining hall and let us know. And if we have a free spot open, you know, because, you know, a lot of homes around here have guest rooms. My home does. Elder Doug's home does. Uh, we have a guest room. And if you can secure one of them, then you can actually come down a little early and join the little saints and the saints and stuff to fellowship with them. And then you can get up the next morning and head on back home. Oh, that sounds real good right there, Pastor. Sounds real good. Is that all right? Um, Brother Terry on right here. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got Brother Terry on right here. He want to uh, say a few things before I go. All right. Here. Put him on. Hold on. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom, my brother. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm blessed. And I'm just grateful and thankful for the Father for dealing with me, of course. Um, how you feeling, Pastor? Tired, but other than that, I'm encouraged. I'm doing well, but I'm not the only one tired. The Saints are straightway here the same way, but we doing all right, my brother. Well, yes, indeed. Um, I was just calling to say thank you for that video you put out for children in the system. Yes. And because I'm dealing with that same situation myself, and it was just a, a light to my darkness. And I say, man, Pastor, in my business. Oh, it's going to be all right, though. It's going to be all right. Well, glory to the king. I just thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, well, that was all I wanted, and look forward to the message tomorrow. All right, my brother. Shabbat be encouraged. Shalom all the saints. Shabbat shalom. Bless y'all, brother Gary. Yeah, bless you. 
Let's go to Texas. Call number 817. Let me see. Brother Shane says that this one is not on file. Thank you, Brother Shane. Uh, 817, Texas Pastor Dow, you know, serve you to the radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Uh, we have a Texas number. It's because we moved from Texas about three years ago now, but we're actually in uh, southern Missouri. Missouri. And I've been listening to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in the Ozarks there. Uh, we're about an hour outside of Springfield area. Oh, Okay. But I've been listening, yes, sir. But I've been listening to you now for, uh, I'd say between a year and a half to two years, uh, listening to you and Pastor Joe Fox as well. Uh, but within this last eight months or so, my family and I have just started uh, listening to you solely and exclusively on Shabbat. So uh, I just wanted to call just as an initial step of making myself known to you. Uh, as an initial introduction, I called the dining hall as well earlier this week. Uh, so just trying to reach out to you and want to, you know, send blessings to you as well and just tell you how thankful I am for the videos and the information that you uh, produce and the truth that you preach uh, boldly and unashamedly. <laughs> we are tremendously lacking that in this day and age, as I know you know. Uh, but we, my family and I, we tremendously appreciate that, brother. So I just wanted to call you and uh, again as an initial introduction, making myself known to you. Um, and at some point, I would like to, you know, how, depending on how things go, you know, try to make our way to Tennessee uh, for a feast with you, with you all. At some point, uh, I'd like to reach out to Pastor Corey. And those, you know, closer to us as well, just trying to establish some fellowship with, with uh, Israel. <laughs> what is your name, my brother? Yes, sir. My name is David is the first name. And my last name is Burdett. B-U-R-D-I-T-T. -T. All right, brother Shane, record that, log that down, brother Shane, and um, we'll get him and, and write the number down, brother Shane, and we'll get him uh, in contact with Pastor Corey out there in Missouri. My brother, it's been an honor to speak with you. Glad you called in. Yes, sir. The honor is all mine, and I'm uh, glad to have the opportunity to call and, and look forward to catching up with Pastor Corey and Lord willing, uh, you all there as well someday. All right, my brother. Be encouraged, okay? Yes, sir. Bless you, brother. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to Brother Jim in Wisconsin. Call number 262-262. This is Pastor Dow. You on the straight with you the radio broadcast. I can help you, Brother Jim. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom sister. How yeah. you doing? Better. <laughs> what you got, Brother Jim? Oh, just, just nothing. Uh, just, uh, you know, I guess uh, if, if anything, I just appreciate you, Pastor. And uh, oh, I know that. You know, it uh, this week this week has been just uh, uh, a depth of knowledge. Um, you know, and I, I I I reached into my not my bag, but your bag of information and things that I have gleaned from you and uh, have applied it. And uh, uh, it's just beautiful, you know, uh, the result. So I just, I give that honor to you. And I appreciate uh, that because I would have never responded uh, to my brother the way I did uh, in terms of it just doesn't matter about what I think or you think. You got that right. It's totally irrelevant. It's, it's what's in the book. And, yeah. um, you know, I can tell you that uh, it has still been crickets ever since then. <laughs> and uh, Amazing, huh? So it is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it really reminds me of uh, your primary comment you know, about Green Bay and that uh, they just want to talk to you about how they feel or what they think or, <laughs> you know, or, or what their consensus 
opinion is. And I said, you know, I really don't care because uh, in John 12 and 48, it tells me by his words, I will be judged, not by anybody else's words, That's or right. not by what anybody else thinks. And when that day comes that, you know, I have to face my music, you know, we all do, uh, there's nobody going to be standing there with me. And so it's going to be, did you seek truth? Did you hear truth? Did you hear what was sent to you? Did you hear and receive what you read in my words? And it, it doesn't matter. You know, as you know, my brother uh, considers himself to be a master of the bird, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> All I can say is, you know, I shut it down. These folks are amazing, ain't they? They are. They truly are. They truly are. Well, well that's all I have. I just wanted to greet you, Pastor Dow. Bless you. And bless the saints of the Most High. Shout out to, uh, shout out to Elder Becker there. Elder, I, I truly hope that uh, that Rolodex is slowed down for you, my, my brother. Man, let That's me tell you it. something, brother. They they keep, man, they keep Elder Doug busy. I was, uh, when Elder Doug, um, he had a crew and they went to South Carolina to put that um, metal roof on that building down there with Elder Austin them. And um, I took his phone yes, calls. Man, it took me half the day just to answer those phone calls. I believe it. And Elder Doug, he just thanked me that it. I actually took up his task of, of trying to keep the phone calls at bay, you know what I mean, while, you know, answering to help yes, the yoke easy, you know, the burden light there. And I tell you, man, it, it's off the chain. It literally is off the chain nowadays what goes on. Well, you know, someday my telephone blows up with people who – you know, I speak to people who, you know, I have had the privilege to speak this truth to. And uh, so, you know, when my phone blows up, it blows up sometimes. And I just, you know, I, I just deal with it. And uh, But I know that when my phone blows up, it ain't nothing like when your uh, Elder Doug's phone blows up. Right. Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> don't hold your breath too long waiting on your... Um cemetery talk brother to actually get back with you because they ain't going to do it because they ain't got the spirit of truth in them. <laughs> I imagine, I, I'm just going to tell you right now, I, I know my brother very well, and, you know, right now he's he's trying to figure out how he's going to twist those verses around to support what he wants to say. He's yeah. trying to figure that one out right now. Well, he can have fun. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, because I know how to answer. <laughs> All right, my brother. Well, bless you. Pat, bless you and my sister. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. Sure. Yeah, you got all these people out there that they go to these cemeteries. And they so-called have a degree and they learn how to pastor, preach, teach. I don't know what the hell they're teaching them, but whatever it is, it definitely ain't the word. It ain't the message. It's not the good news. It's not what Isaiah said that the that the Messiah would preach and teach. It definitely ain't that. It's amazing. You would think that all these people would be secure in their education, secure in their belief systems. I mean, up there in Green Bay, Wisconsin, um, Brother Kabir says there's this Presbyterian church. They debate everybody up there. They got the Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholics, the Apostolics, the Pentecostals. They got them all on the run every time it comes to a debate. Well, now Pastor Dowson challenged them, and guess who's running? The Presbyterians are running. Amazing, isn't it? The hypocrisy is off the chain. Now Brother Kabir, he's seven months learned in study, I think, in his faith, man. And there ain't nobody up there in that area that could hold a candle to him. Nobody. He studies, he prays, he fasts. There's not a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, um, a school superintendent, 
uh, whatever you want to call it, except not one person up there that can handle him face-to-face, one-on-one in this word. And that's just seven months of study and learning. Imagine what you would be like after 25 years of this. Isn't that all changed? Pennsylvania, not on file. Nah, we'll wait on that one. Where we at? Virginia, 757, Brother Toby. It's Pastor Dow. We're going to share with you radio broadcast. I can help you, Brother Toby. Bye, Shalom, Pastor. I was uh, going to call in and ask how you were doing, but you told me at the beginning of the show, so I don't want to waste the time. Uh, I was calling to tell you that uh, y'all have been busy with us. Uh, we have been trying to get this house sold so we can get down there to the property in Alabama. And uh, we had a whole lot of luck with that. But um, this week we had uh, we had one of our prayers answered. Uh, I don't know if uh, Elder told you how awesome it was to try and walk up that hill. Oh, he uh, told me. There, but oh, yeah, he told me. Yes, sir. That is a serious hike. But um, we was blessed with a truck that's going to get us up there once I get done building it the rest of the way. And, and uh, got a lot of good stuff coming. Hopefully here, here real soon we'll start making this move official. But, Lord. Uh, just figured I'd call in and let you know about it. I uh, put a video up there. I figured um, maybe during Passover out there at least or whatnot. I don't know if you watch it, but. Um, it, it was a real blessing. We've been uh, trying to figure out how to get all kinds of things together to turn and get up that hill. So now we got to wait. Well, hallelujah. But, uh, all right. Anyway, well, Pastor, I ain't going to hold up. Got a lot of folks calling in, so I'm going to carry myself to bed, and I will talk at you later on, sir. Hey, be encouraged. Watch over you and that family, and be safe. And watch your six. Yes, sir, always. <laughs> Twice. All yes, right, sir, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hey, I wanted to say that we had two more Israelites born into the ministry. Brother Terrence, uh, up there in Straightway, Kentucky, um, he had a little girl. Sure did. First one in the family there. Doing fine. Home birth. And then also... Um, Brother Desmond has got a son down there in Houston, Texas. His wife, Sister Shay, bore him a son today at 6.30 p.m. Right after the Sabbath came in. Uh, we'll get to wait and all the other stuff later. So, man, Israel is having babies. <laughs> and they coming in. So, congratulations, to both you brothers and you sisters down there, y'all take care of these little Israelite babies. Uh, I bless it be to the Most High. Y'all hope that your wives are doing well and doing fine. So, Sister Shay, y'all get some rest. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Desmond, make sure your wife gets some rest up there straightway. Don't rush it along. Take care of those little small Israelites. Glory to the King. And we thank the Father for it. Now let's go to Pennsylvania, not on file. Boy, bro, she ain't on top of it tonight, ain't he? 813. 813 is Pastor Dow. You're going to distribute to the radio broadcast. I can help you. Shabbat shalom, my pastor. This is Brother Jose. Man, Jose, man, ain't you in Florida? Yes. How'd I end up with a Pennsylvania yes, number? Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm actually not even in Florida. I'm in the Ozarks right now in Arkansas. I'm about to. I wanted to give you a call. I haven't heard from you. I haven't spoke to you in a long time. I just want to say hello and bless you, Pastor. Thank you for all that you do, like always. I Hallelujah. want to give you a heads up. Everything's going great on this side of things. Um, kind of just give you a, a lowdown of the blessings the Most High has uh, bestowed upon my family, along with my brother Sergio and Lindsay, his wife. They're actually with me right now. They wanted to say hello. And... Um, we're actually going to be taking a look at some land that we may be purchasing uh, together. So we're finally going to be doing what you've been teaching and preaching on, which is getting out of the city. Hallelujah. All right. Let's hear it. Um, yes, sir. Hey, Pastor. Bless you. Bless Straightway. Shalom. 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 Bless y'all. 
Thank you for everything. Thank you for sharing our baptism. It was beautiful, and we appreciate everything you do. Hallelujah. Bless y'all. Love y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Pastor, we don't want to keep you Hold up. I know the more saints want to talk to you. I just wanted to tell you, love you. Uh, bless all the saints of stay away, and we're always listening, um, and we'll always listen to the day of the breath leaves our body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep us posted, all right, my brother? Will do, my pastor. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Bless y'all. Let's go to North Carolina, Brother Aaron. Hey, Brother Aaron, 252252 is Pastor Dow. You're going to serve me to the radio broadcast. I can help, Brother Aaron. Hallelujah, Pastor. Um, yeah, man, I just wanted to say, call in and say, hey, you know, and uh, say hello to all the saints. I'm uh, staying on top of buying that ammo, trying to every time we get paid, you know. Just wanted to call in and say, hey. All right, my brother. Stay encouraged. All right? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I had somebody send a message in and ask me, uh, Pastor Dow, what strong drink do you like? Of course, I'm sure everybody's probably chuckling at that one. Everybody already knows in the ministry. Pastor Dow likes Johnny Walker Blue Label. Now, if you choose to bless the man of y'all with a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue Label or this Passover, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to cost you at least $250 a bottle. You don't have to. But since you asked, I went ahead and told you. Um, but that is it. Uh, don't y'all forget to honor the Most High Yah with the first fruit of your labors, your substance and stuff. Um, because there's a wonderful thing going on in the earth right now with this ministry. I foresee this ministry, at least until Jesus come or whenever he decides to come, I foresee this thing getting huge, big. By the time I'm 60, this thing is going to be so big. It's going to have communities established all over the place. We're going to have, make sure we got an eldership, a build up all over the place. It's, this thing is going to be something. We're going to be self-sufficient uh, from one end of the United States and other places in this earth. And we're not going to have to depend on this system for nothing. That's what I'm hoping for by the time I'm 60. And we're going to be working diligent at that. It's going to be something else. It really truly is to have a, a inheritance and a legacy to leave behind for the Israelites. Glory to the king. And Yah is good. How are we to sing this song? I know Yah, my Yah, Yah is good. You know Yah, Yah, Yah is good. You know, Yah has done so much for us. You can't even begin to number the things that he's done for us. And we're only here temporary until we get to the kingdom. Yah is good. To us. Man. That's so beautiful. George, Brother Mitch, 706, Pastor Dow. You know, serve me to the radio broadcast. I can help Brother Mitch. Hey, bless you, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We got you, didn't we, son? Yes, sir. I have fallen asleep. Sorry about that, Pastor. That's all right, man. It happens, man. When you're a working man, what you got, Brother Mitch? Just calling to say thank you for your service to the saints of the Most High Yah, and definitely looking forward to seeing you at Passover. It's all right, my brother. You be encouraged, all right? Keep supporting that elder down there, brother. Yes, sir. Mitch. Yes, sir. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to Michigan. Not on file again, huh? 586, 586 there in Michigan. It's Pastor Dow. You know, to me through the radio broadcast. I can help you there in Michigan. Man, that was fast. That dropped off fast. Hey, wait a minute. Brother Reynolds, Alaska, 907, 907. I just saw you in a caller queue. That thing is so long, man. Dang, let me look at this. 
It's, geez, man, there's probably over 100 people in this call of queue right now. I'm glad I saw your name. Let me pull you up. Brother Reynolds, Alaska, 907. It's Pastor Dow, you know, Service Truth Radio Broadcast. How can I help you now, my brother? Well, huh. I'm not hearing anything. All of y'all out there that are watching, listening, if you're trying to get in touch with me, you need to try the old blog talk number, 310-982-4226. 310-982-4226, and we'll get right back with you, all right? Glory to the king. Let's go to, let me see what I did, all of them. Let me go just call a cue. Man, brother Chicane, I mean, Sister Chicane, you in there 404? What in the world are you doing? <laughs> Bless you, Pastor. <laughs> Bless you. What are you doing, my sister? <laughs> Calling to get some wisdom from you and some understanding. All right, let's hear it. What you got? Okay, yes, sir. Um, I was I've been reading in First Samuel, and I got to chapter twenty-five, verse thirty-seven. And I got to the part, I was reading it, and I didn't understand what it meant where it says, um, it says when, but it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. Now, I, I looked up the word heart, because, of course, heart is, is dual in, in the word. You have to look up the meaning. It's H 3820. And I saw heart, it also has mind as well. So I was wondering, was he brain dead or did he have a heart attack? Because the following verse also says that it came to pass about 10 days after that Yahweh smote the ball that he died. Well, my sister, you got to read the story in context. The ball was mocking, jeering the whole nine yards. And um, Abigail had went out to help. Um, David and his people because uh, Nabal had turned away Israel, turned away David and the warriors. And David, he had got so mad and he got so upset that he said, man, if I leave anybody here that pisses against the wall in the morning, man, I mean, David was upset. Nabal, according to Abigail, realized how close he was to death. And that he was going against Yah's anointing, that his heart began to harden. After it hardened, Yah ended up taking him. That's what it was. And that's the reason why the renewed covenant often reminds us of a hardened heart. Okay. You got to be careful of that. Yes, sir. Because remember, when we read anything in the Old Testament, Yah was dealing with his people swiftly and, and strictly fast with judgment. Remember that the word says because a sentence against an evil work is not executed expediently. Therefore, it's fully set in the heart of man to do evil and wicked. So a lot of people today think that they're getting by with their wickedness because Yah's not bringing that swift judgment like that. Pow! Just like that. And he's knocking folks off. But boy, mm -hmm. it's coming on him like a whirlwind and a storm, my sister. So guard yourself yes, sir. against a hard heart. Yes, sir. I I, I, I saw the, the anger in King David. I had to look up different versions where I saw every man that pisses on the wall. Everyone that pisses upon the wall, I was just like, okay... We don't pee on walls, so <laughs> well, women to, uh, don't look at it in context. <laughs> I know that's why I was laughing. I was like, it's crazy because the euphemism is instead of just saying every man is, you know, it was, they use the euphemism instead. But it was cool. But um, yes, okay. So I, I definitely understand and the hardness, the hardness of heart. Once he realized how close to death he was, hey, Zakina. I tell you what, yes, sir. I wouldn't even know about this wicked ass generation today. They got, uh, and they they're installing in women's restaurants now, restaurants, women's restrooms or, um, bathrooms or 
urinals or latrines or places you go to relieve yourself. Man, they are installing stuff in there where women can actually stand up and piss now. Can you believe that mess? I saw that on the internet the other day, man. I just, I put my head on my hands. I was like, man, this is off the chain. This don't make sense. This, this, I'm done. I, I mean, I'm, no. I'm so glad I'm out here in the woods. I really too am. These oh, folks are no. sick. I don't see. I can't see me standing up here. I, I I'm sorry. We just don't have that aim. It's not made for that. Hey, you don't believe it? <laughs> all you got, all you got to do is Google it. They got pictures up there. Oh, Pastor, I, I know all about the women standing up and peeing. I, 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 I've come across some that have taken on that, um, that mannerism, I should say, as a man, and they try to do it, and they miss horribly. It's crazy. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's off the chain. <laughs> All right, my sister. Yes, sir. Bless you. Bless you. I'm so glad. You know, every year to go by, I would say in this generation, I look like a prophet, a true prophet. If I actually preaching and teaching the word to come out of her, these folks are off the chain. Let's go to Alaska. Call number 907907. Brother Reynolds this is Pastor Dow. You know, Servitude Radio Broadcast. I can help you, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Man, we got you loud <laughs> and clear. Loud and clear. How you doing, my brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory, honor, and praises be to the Most High, Pastor. I, I want to just uh, bless straightway and all of Israel. And, and this is a, a wonderful and glorious day. Um, when we get off the phone, I, I, I need to talk to you as soon as you, 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 you get a chance. And uh, what you were speaking of, um, Pastor, it is not a dream, it's intimate. And uh, I, I strongly believe that we will be able to organize and, and start building now. And I want to say, like they say down south, show you right. <laughs> You're right on. <laughs> Man, I heard that in a long time. <laughs> all right, my brother. As soon as I get finished this broadcast, when I get down to Bottom Hill, I'll give you a phone call, all right? Yes, sir. The most I bless you mightily. All right, Hello. bless you. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. That's Brother Reynolds up in Alaska. Uh, man, Brother Reynolds, he's been with us in the ministry for quite a few years. You know what's unique about him is that he has actually, when he was still in the military, I think he did 29 years, maybe 30 years in the military. And um, when he was in there, he was buying land. Uh, he's got a, a, two, a couple of homes up there in Kentucky. He's got a business in there in Kentucky, a daycare business. He's got some more farmland. Farmland, he's got land in Mississippi. He's been doing all of this. Kind of like a beer. You think about this for a second. The Most High Yah has been preparing people, literally has been preparing people all of their lives. They may not have been doing it the way the straight way has done it, but they have spent their substance preparing for the saints. They didn't know how it was going to come about, but they knew it was coming. And so you had people that would set up their homes so they could accommodate saints. They would buy lands and, and, and communities and, and, and hope for that the Most High would make a, a way just to accommodate saints. Isn't that beautiful? Think about that for a second. Jesus. Man. Y'all is good. Y'all is, you know what, you know what, man, man, we, we, we got to hear this, we got to, we're going to take you back to the days when my children was young, matter of fact, Chuck has probably just turned a teenager, he was 13 years old maybe, let's go back to the original children of Straightway, let's go back 
probably 18 years ago. 18 years ago. Listen to this. You know, the children know his name. And he shall be called Advocate, Lamb of God, the Resurrection and the Life, Shepherd and Bishop of Souls, Judge, Lord of Lords, Man of Sorrows, Head of the Church, Master, Faithful and True Witness, Rock, High Priest, the Door, Living Water, Bread of Life, Rose of Sharon, Alpha and Omega, Jew Vine, Messiah, Teacher, Holy One, Mediator, the Beloved, Branch, Carpenter, Good Shepherd, Light of the World, Woo! Invisible God, the Word, Chief Cornerstone, Savior, Servant, Author and Finisher of our faith, the Almighty, Everlasting Father, Shiloh, Light of the Tribe of Judah, I Am, King of Kings, Prince of Peace, Bridegroom, Only Begotten Son, Wonderful Counselor, Emmanuel, Son of Man, Day Spring, the Amen. King of the Jews, Prophet, Redeemer, Anchor, Bright Morning Star, the Way, the Truth, and the Life, Jesus Christ. Whoa, boy, don't they just get you every single time you hear that? I mean, it's, it's like that anointing. It just rises up inside of you. It just, it's just, it just, it just quickens your body every time you hear it. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hey! Man, anyway, uh, you know, let me get back to this broadcast because I'm telling you, I will have my own personal revival. I will leave y'all in a minute and I'll be right here in a relationship with the Most High y'all in a heartbeat. Glory to the King. Texas, not on file, huh? 682-682. Pastor Dow, we're going to you the radio broadcast. I can help you there in Texas. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Who am I speaking with? My name is Teresha Woods. And um, um, my husband's name is Lamarcus Burns. He's been calling in for a while. But he had a question about um about fasting, like what you should and shouldn't do. About what? Fasting. Fasting. Where's your husband at? He is asleep right now. He's asleep. Okay. What was this question about fasting? He wanted to know, like, um, what you should and shouldn't do. As in, like, should you, like, why are you fasting? Should you go to the store? Or, like, should you handle business? Okay. When you're fasting... Fasting has nothing to do with business, has nothing to do with going to the store, has nothing to do with buying and selling. It has to do with you abstaining from meats and abstaining from bread. If you want to go on a supernatural fast, well, you're going to really, truly, listen to me. I'm going to give you all something here real close. I want y'all to listen to me, okay? Listen to me. You want to go on a supernatural fast to where you can actually feel the Ruach and the Holy Spirit. You go 24 hours with no food and no water. You do that, you get off that fast, you're going to hear, but you get off that fast, you're going to feel the anointing and drawing. Because as the fleshly man diminishes, the spiritual man increases and you become sensitive to the word. Most people, there was, I had a preacher the other day asking me, they said, Pastor Dow, how in the world do you, week after week after week after week after week after week, how are you able to deliver such a strong word, sound? I said, Ahem. fasting. Of course, I don't do like people do. I don't let you know when I'm fasting. I'm not going to tell you. I'm, my wives don't even know when I'm fasting half the time. I don't let nobody hardly know when I'm fasting. They ask me, you eating? I go, nope. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's all need. <laughs> but all you got to do, by their fruits, you shall know them. By their fruits, you shall know. When you feel that anointing on Shabbat, you feel that fear, that joy, you feel that excitement, you feel the anointing, you feel all that, 
as a result of a man fasting. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. We'll be ready for Passover, but did you get your answer, sister? Yes. Hallelujah. So, he can fast with just water if he wants. He can fast with, um, but, you know, if you want to do a supernatural fast where you're going to really truly feel a Ruach, no food, no water, 24 hours, all right? Okay. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have to actually do a newsletter. Man, I keep piling up more and more work on me. God of mercy. Jesus. Father, help me. Please help me, Father. Please help me. Please help me. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. I, you know, the reason why I keep saying that because I know if I don't put it out, it ain't going to get out. Most of you are three newsletters already behind. We have been working extensively on that website updating it month after month keeping you informed you can tell i told i say the best way to hide stuff from israelites hide it in a book put it in a word it, it's sad but it's true anyway let me go on here let's go to uh louisiana brother king it's pastor dial we're going to serve with you the radio broadcast how can i have brother king yes sir Shabbat shalom, pastor. how you doing i'm all right brother king how are you my brother I'm pretty good. Um, I have a, uh, a question about something that I've been trying to get in contact with you about to uh, um, address. Um, you had made a video called No Private Study. No, I mean, excuse me, No Private Studies. Yes. Uh, and um, it was a comment made on 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 the on the video from Logic 1611. Now this comment is about me. Oh, oh, oh. Um, time out. But I time out. I made a video, and somebody made a comment on the video. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. This is what you need to know about me. If somebody makes a comment on the video, brother, 99% of the time, I don't even know who made what, if you are even follow me. Right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Oh, well, I didn't want to uh clear that up because I know it's about me but um because there's some things that he it's not really what you said but it's mainly what he said but he's twisting words and he's lying with what he said in in the things uh in his little post let me ask you a question brother why are you so yes, concerned sir. first of all if I made a video probably more than likely it's going to be anywhere from three to five thousand people that's going to view that video on average on average. Mm -hmm. So why are you concerned about one person making one video about you or one answer about you? I mean, people, they make answers and they give out their opinion all the time about me, brother. You understand what I mean? But why are you so concerned about clearing your name with this one person? What do they mean to you? No, I, I'm not trying to clear my name with a person. I don't want you or straightway feel that I'm that type. I don't really care how he feels about the situation. My thing is I didn't want straightway to feel that I was that type of person. My brother, Brother King, I want to help you out here, okay? Yes, sir. Brother, we judge every brother and every sister based on their merit, the way they deal with the Most High and live as we know them, not based on what somebody else said. I mean, after all, if everybody was paying attention to every slander, every unbeliever, every wicked person out there that falsifies information against me, I mean, I've got people that live with me. Oh, you follow me? Let me give you an example, man. I'm getting old. You follow me? I am getting very old. Now, I'll be 52 years old this week, okay? And that's a hard 52 because I work like hell. Let me get let me get the youngest one. JC. JC, let me can you come to the mic for a second? I'll get JC if he's in here to come to the mic for a second. He's uh, uh one of the last brothers that moved here on the community with his wife. Um I I'll, I'll get them to come here and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about, okay? Um because <laughs> most people, brother, they just don't know me. They don't know me. Uh, and Carolina your wife, t tell your wife, come here too, man. Come here, Carolina. I mean, I want to give you, I don't want to use this as an example, okay? 
Come on in, bro, JC. You don't come on in, bro. I'm gonna use this as an example too, all right? Bro, JC. Yes, sir. How long you been living it? Come on, sit down the seat for a second, son. Let everybody see it. We're gonna do an interview here for a second. I wanna try to teach everybody something out there, all right? All right. You you're looking right here, okay? Oh, all right. Right yes, there, right there, bro, JC. Bro, JC, how long you been in the ministry? Uh, about five years, sir. Five years. How long you have you lived on the community? It's been a, a little over a year now. Probably a little over a year. Hold yeah. on one second, Caroline. A little over a year. Um, do you, um, would you say that you know my manner of lifestyle? Yes, sir. And how I live? Yes, sir. Um, so, number one, I asked this question, right? Do you think I'm concerned about what other people out there say who have a negative comment about me or negative disposition? Do I really care? No. No, okay. Hell no. All right. Your own personal testimony <laughs> of you living here for how long? A year? Yes, sir. A year. All right. All right. Your own personal testimony, does it line up with the way that those people out there have painted a picture, a negative picture about me, about you, and you live here on the land for a whole year? I don't know where to get the information from. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes, yes. Oh, chain? Yes, way, way, another world type information. But somebody got to lie about somebody, something. Somebody have to. Thank you, my brother. Yes, sir. Carolina, come on in here, daughter. Hey, you on the hot seat. Get in the hot seat. Yeah. All right, this is Carolina. Carolina, how long have you been in the ministry? Seven years. Seven years. We've been knowing each other a long time. Yes, sir. Long time. Yes, sir. You the Floridian. Yes, sir. All right. And um, you've been on the community. Matter of fact, you used to come to the community and work quite a bit before you even moved here. Yes, sir. All right. Sir. And then you find that you're here on the community. Yes, sir. All right, so you've known me seven years. Is there anything in my character, the way that the world presents me, resembles anything of what they say the people who have a negative disposition of your pastor? No, sir, they're way off. Way off, huh? Way off. Now, mind you, you see me almost every day. Mm -hmm. You live with me. Mm -hmm. In other words, I ain't got no bushes I can duck and hide behind. No. I ain't got no hypocrisy. The saints ain't got no hypocrisy to put on. No. It is what it is. Is that right? That, exactly. <laughs> that pastor down that they be talking about out there, am I that? No, sir. I don't even know who that is. Describe for the people out there. I'm going to scoot you over just a little bit, my sister. Describe for the people out there who your pastor is in your own words. Who my pastor is in yep. my own pastor words? Pastor Dow. Well, Pastor is a man of integrity. He's a trustworthy man. He lines up with the word. I don't see no hypocrisy in what he does. Um, he's faithful. He's true. He's uh, kind. Oh man, it's just so many. It's so many words to describe him, but he just lines up his walk, his speech, his actions, everything just just lines up with with Yahweh. And I love it because I, I get to see Yahweh's uh, word alive, living. So that's how I would describe you, Pastor. Thank you very much, dog. Yes, sir. Bless you. <laughs> so what in the world are all you people out there going to do when you got living eyewitness testimonies who live with me, eat with me, breathe with me, talk with me, Every single day. What are you going to do about that, bro King? What are you going to do about that, bro King? Um, nothing really you can do. A person that don't really know. There you go. bro King, you take the same posture. Don't worry about yes, what these outside people say. All right? We are strong enough in discernment to know them that are his. You living right, you doing right. Believe me, brother, we'll pick up on it. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, it wasn't never really about what he thought. It was just like I didn't want, I, like I said, I didn't want straight to. to I got you. Pick me like this. That's all right, bro King. Bro King, you, be at peace, my brother. All right. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Keep rejoicing and lift his name up. All right, my brother. Yes, sir. Shabbat shalom. Hey, thank you, Pastor Dan. Shabbat shalom. Ain't y'all good? 
look at the devil, and the devil is a liar. Man, what time is it? Man, we out here early tonight. Brother Scott says 118 out there on YouTube right there. Man, it dropped there just a little bit, but that's all right. We're good to go. All right, check it out. Saints, I want y'all to have mercy on us. I put us under scrutiny. We got a brand new song we're going to sing tomorrow. So get yourself ready. I usually don't give no warning. You usually just come out with it. We've only practiced this song in its entirety a total of 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And we're going to make an attempt at it tomorrow in hopes for you to get it, okay? We love y'all. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all tomorrow morning. Listen to me. Let me get... Let me get an answer from Brother Scott. We're having problems with Dante. If you don't see the live stream at um, online-church.org tomorrow, I think I will be safe to say to go to the YouTube live stream. Let me check with Brother Scott real quick. All right, hold on. Brother Scott, if we don't do Dante tomorrow, can we broadcast live on YouTube? As long as he, oh, it's got to be set up in advance? What else? Well, uh, when it broadcast live on the website? Just like Blog Talk. Just like Blog Talk. Okay. Bro Scott says that we'll be broadcasting live just like Blog Talk if we have Dan Tech somehow don't make us some, you know, I don't know what the hell's going on, but something's going on. Um, next week, we'll keep you posted throughout the week. We may be on Vimo broadcasting our services live because we already pay a premium on that when we posting up our patron videos okay i thank each and every last one of you for your offerings your letters of support i truly do i love you all i thank you thank you thank you i can't say it enough when i see you i'll thank you even more so again um i want to let you know we do prefer cash in the mail delivered by two three day mail ups usps carrier just in case many of you may have forgotten, because we don't want to give Uncle Sam's. I remember Mama Nelly. Mama Nelly said, man, if you get offers in, and then you turn around and use it through the system, then you got to turn around and pay ten or $15,000 in taxes to the state. Man, you don't want to give them boogers nothing, and we don't. But anyway, I love you all. Looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning on Shabbat service. I bless you all. And the sweet presses is strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name of our soon coming King, Yahshua Amashik, Jesus the Christ. Get ready for the new song tomorrow, okay? And not only that, we got two or three new songs that we're working on right now. Man, we're getting up in the 20s now. But anyway, I bless y'all. In the sweet presses is strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name of our soon coming King, Yahshua Amashik, Jesus the Christ. Shabbat Shalom. The king is coming. Look at him looking.